Hi everyone, Pam from CAP here. Today I'm gonna go through how to cut out a Zerlux zirconia crown, and then we're gonna go through the shading process. First thing we're gonna do is use a carbide to cut the crown out of the disc. Normally I would use a high speed with a carbide. Uh, in this situation I only have a low speed, so I'm using a low speed carbide, but I wanna make sure I use it on very high speed. Let the tool do all the work. And gently cut through halfway through each sprue, starting with the occlusal up, then flip it over so that the occlusal is down, cut through the rest of the sprue, and when the crown does fall out, it'll fall on the occlusal surface and not on the margin. And that just gives you a little bit of extra um, safety when cutting the crown out so it doesn't fall and accidentally chip a margin. The next tool I'm going to use is a white rubber wheel. And I'm going to take down most of what's left of the sprue area so that it's almost flush but not all the way. I personally like to remove the sprue completely. I don't really want to grind on the zirconia after it's sintered. The next tool I'm going to use is a silicone bullet shaped rubber wheel and I'm going to take down the remainder of the sprue. What's nice about this is the crown is convex and so is the rubber wheel or rubber cone and so it hovers right over the remainder of the sprue and as soon as you see it removed, just stop and you don't have to worry about gouging your zirconia or leaving a concavity. And this tool is really good for a beginner as well. And that is a super easy way to post-process your zirconia Zerlux crown. Hey everyone, today we're going to shade a Zerlux 16 white zirconia crown and we're going to use the Zerlux shading liquids. We're going to use the Denton and we're going to use the Effect Shade Blue. Um, some of the tools you're going to need are uh, a small brush. You could use a micro brush if you like. We're going to need some Q-tips for blotting the crown dry. Some plastic tweezers. Always plastic tweezers. You never want to use metal. And we also have an aqua brush here that is also another option, and I'll show you how you could use that as well. So after you have post-processed your crown and you've thoroughly cleaned all of the dust off, you can start your shading process. You have a couple of options. You can use a micro brush to apply your incisal effects, a small regular bristle brush, and sometimes it's convenient to have an aqua brush that's pre-filled with the liquid. So we're going to start off with the Zerlux Shading Effects Liquid Blue. And we're going to apply the blue in a staggered feathered pattern all the way around. Buckle, distal, lingual, and mesial. If you did want to use a micro brush, those work great as well. I also like to accent the occlusal cusp ridges and your marginal ridges. You don't want to get your uh, blue effect shade into your central dissectional groove area because naturally that area is uh, more intense with chroma and not incisal. You also want to add all of your effects first and the very last thing that you want to do is dip it in the final shade. So the next thing that I'm going to do is because I want to have a little bit more vitality or gradient in this particular crown I'm actually going to put a little bit of dentin at the gingival that's one shade darker. So my end shade I would like to be an A2 but I'm going to take just a little bit of A3 and go around the gingival area 
on the inside and on the outside. Just very little bit just to warm it up and have it blend nicely. And the other thing that you can do is also take that one shade darker and run it along the central dissectional groove area. That gives you some really nice depth without having to be committed to put a, putting occlusal staining there. And super simple, real quick process. Now we're going to take the crown using plastic tweezers always and we're going to dip it into the dentin, shade A2. We're going to dip it for two seconds, take it right back out, and we're going to blot it dry with a Q-tip and take away any of the excess puddles. And the process is really that easy. Um, always make sure that you dip it in the dentin last if you dip it first, all of the effect shades that you put on will not absorb in. Whatever you put on first is going to infiltrate your zirconia, so that's very important to remember. The last step before sintering is that you're going to want to put your crown under a heat lamp and dry it for 25 minutes, and then you're ready to sinter. After your crown has dried for at least 25 minutes, you're going to go move on to sintering, put it in your oven. You always want to follow the manufacturer's instructions for use and their sintering cycles. Because of the variances in different ovens, we have found a program that works really great and we've had some very good success using and I'd like to share that with you as well. If you find that the IFU is not giving you the desired results that you would like, I would recommend trying this, this program.